Hello, JPU family. Welcome to another episode. You are listening to Jamaica Politics University. Guys, before I get started, let me just speak up all of our subscribers, all of our visitors, all of our silent listeners, everybody who decide to come by here and listen to our videos, share them, comment, like, subscribe. We appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much. So guys, let us go down in this one here. As you can see in the title, today we're going to talk about how Mark Golding is trying to walk in the shoes of Dr. Peter Phillips. I'm going to tell you why, and I'm going to tell you why it's just not working. But first, guys, make we talk about Mark Golding's message as an opposition leader and what he has been saying since he became opposition leader. Mark Golding's message from dear one right out of the blocks. Him start to say corruption. Yes, that is him campaign message. And your own is corrupt. And your own is corrupt. And your own is corrupt. That is his message. And your own is corrupt. But Mark Golding no corrupt. And Peter Bunting no corrupt. Mark Golding like to say him have a clean hands. And him have a clean this. And him have a clean that. But and your own is corrupt. Mark Golding even go as far as to go to the diaspora. And go tell the people in my Florida, say Cornwall Regional, the money and out of spin of corruption. So even the healthcare system now corrupt and Andrew Owen is corrupt. Everything that the government is doing, they're walking all about from Jamaica to America, calling it corrupt and corrupt and corrupt. Now let us look at when Dr. Peter Phillips was the opposition leader of Jamaica. The following is paid for by the People's National Party. Good evening. Thank you for joining me. I know you have much to do, so I appreciate your taking the time. This is the first in a series of regular broadcasts that I will be having over the next few months. I'd like to talk to you about some issues of national concern that people continue to raise with me as I go across the country. The issue generating deep national frustration and anger is the widespread mismanagement and corruption that has penetrated almost every area of the government's operation. So guys, the truth of the matter is during Andrew Holness's first term, Andrew Holness had some people in his cabinet and in the JLP circles who got a little bit too comfortable and too happy being in government. The lack of accountability. We saw things from corruption to nepotism to cronyism, misappropriation of funds. We saw arrest and we saw people resigning. That is the truth and the fact of the matter. Guys, remember over on this channel, we're not biased and we are not going to sugarcoat anything. You're going to get truth and you're going to get facts. And it doesn't matter who the truth come down upon. That was the reality of Andrew Holness's first term. What did Andrew Holness do? Andrew Holness was never fingered in any corruption or any thiefing. The people them that were either in his cabinet or somehow connected to his party, he was forced to take action whether to ask them to resign or to fire them or to remove them from his cabinet. He had to do that, and that he did. We expect the Prime Minister of Jamaica to react that way to anything that goes against what is right. And we have also seen other Prime Ministers had to take action when members of their cabinet or whosoever close to them will come to take advantage of the people or if the people lost confidence in them for whatever reason, they had to be removed. And while you have some leaders, who did not remove them? They defend them. Under the circumstance at the time, Dr. Phillips was doing his job. He was not blowing any false alarm. He was not telling any lies on anybody. He was not trying to spread false information and disinformation. He was doing his job. He was calling for accountability. Some of the things that he said was true when it comes to those who were being corrupt and stuff like that. So he was doing his job and nobody can blame him for what he said where the corruption and misappropriation were concerned. And might I also add 
Dr. Phillips had and has the moral authority to talk about corruption because his name has never been mixed up in corruption, stealing of taxpayers' money, or anything similar. So he had that moral authority to speak. It's funny how when PNP was in opposition last time and Dr. Phillips was talking out against wrongs, what was Mark Golding during, doing during that time? I didn't hear him backing or supporting his uh, party and his leader on the topic of accountability. You know what Mark Golding was busy doing? He was busy sabotaging Dr. Phillips and instead joining up with Peter Bunting to overthrow his leader. That is what Mark Golding was doing. Mark Golding didn't seem to have an issue with Andrew Holness at that time. As a matter of fact, when these anti-corruption rallies and protests were being held against those who were committing these acts, Mark Golding was nowhere out there. You had KD Knight out there. You had other members of the PNP out there. But Mark Golding was never out there. He did not have a problem with Andrew Holness's government at that time. You know what Mark Golden was doing when this accountability discussion was happening in the country? Peter Bunting is a winner, four out of four, and more to come, comrades. That is what Mark Golden was busy doing. Mark Golden was busy building the Rise United movement against the PNP, and he was busy telling Jamaica that Peter Bunting is a winner, and we know what happened peter bunting was flatly rejected for the leadership of the pnp and also rejected as a member of parliament so that is what mark golding was busy doing he cared nothing about accountability in government he had no problem with andrew holness but all of a sudden andrew corrupt i'm not we need accountability we need this we need that well, let us look at whether Mark Golding has the moral authority to be calling other people corrupt. We've already established the fact that Andrew Holness has never been fingered in corruption or theft. Now, let us look at whether we can say the same for Mark Golding. Although I came into the party through Dr. Omar Davis because I knew him in the financial sector, that's how I got into the PNP really, through my relation with him. So we just heard about how Mark Golding came into the politics and into the People's National Party because of his relationship with this man, Omar Davis. We know what happened to Jamaica when Omar Davis was finance minister. Worst financial meltdown in the history of Jamaica. Biggest transfer of wealth from the poor to the very rich in Jamaica. We know Bunting and Golding was very instrumental in FinSAC. Let me let you listen to one of the victims of FinSAC. It's very, very hard to cope with life like this. After working hard for several years to build his dream house, he was thrown out in an instant, losing belongings he and his family had spent years accumulating. The FinSAC entrepreneur claims his house, which was valued at between $9 and $11 million, was offloaded by FinSAC for just three and a half million dollars. Yeah, at the time when the house sold, they said that whole 11 pint odd million. And they said they sold it for 3.5 and I still have a balance of seven pint something. Up to now, I don't know if I still owe that money or what happened. I don't know if I have a money in my hand now, if they will come to me for that money because they say I owe it and I don't know if it's still growing interest because every time we ask for an account nobody won't give us give it to us. Mr. Willis says he ended up being fin sacked because he took a revolving loan from the now defunct Eagle Commercial Bank. However with the interest rates skyrocketing he like many others found it difficult to keep a pace with the financial demands. Dealing with the emotional toll of FinSAC hasn't been easy for many who were forced to start life all over again. 
Guys, this place called DBNG, Dering, Bunting and Golding, played a huge role in Finsac. And Mark Golding can never come out publicly and honestly tell the people the role that he played in Finsac. Finsac was one of the biggest financial criminal, white collar criminal act in Jamaica's history. And the cost of Finsac to those who lost in Finsac is countless trillions of dollars. So Mark Golding's involvement in this white collar criminal activity, he cannot call anybody corrupt. And that's the truth. And if his hands were truly clean, he would have come out a long time ago and said something about the role he played in Finsac. He cannot do that and he will never do that. He and his partner, Peter Bunting, their hands are both soiled and dirty with Finsac money. And the truth of the matter is, Andrew Holness has done no such thing and to this magnitude to the Jamaican people. In Andrew Holness' second term, I think Andrew Holness has learned that in business, you have no friend. Business and pleasure does not mix well. Because at some point in time or at any point in time, you may have to tell people you love or friends that, listen, you have to resign or you have to go if they turn out to not be what you expect them to be in terms of honesty and integrity. So I think Andrew Holness has done a lot better in his second term. He's working a lot harder and is more focused. So Mark Golding has no moral authority to call Andrew Holness corrupt. Mark Golding was corrupt on some high level stuff, on some white collar stuff, and he was never held accountable. If it was England, he would not have gotten away with it or any place else for that matter. And that's why he feels he has the moral authority to call other people corrupt. He said it. First day he became president of the PNP and leader of the opposition. Me don't make my money already. Me not come as of a scrape. Me don't make my money already. Don't make my money already. He made his money already and he's back for more. He and Peter Bunting. And that's why you don't see one without the other or you don't get one without the other. That's why they both conspired to take down the People's National Party, to take down their leader, to control the party. Because they remember how sweet it was to get all those sweetheart deals and to be part of this whole Finsac thing and made all their money. It felt good and they want more. You don't get one without the other. They're partners in crime. They are the reason why the comrades said this. Comrades slam PNP. Why? They say parties, no capitalists, being run by a few well connected individuals. This is what the comrades said at their meeting. So, Mark Golding trying to ride this wave of corruption that Dr. Phillips once spoke about. It's not working and it will never work because Jamaicans will always remember. Mark Golding, Peter Bunting, Omar Davis, and what they did in Finsac. Thanks to Mark Golding and Peter Bunting, Andrew Holness has matured in his job. He has learned to put more quality people around him, and that he's doing. He's working a lot harder and a lot smarter. Mark Golding has no message, and that's sad. The opposition is not viable with the citizenship problem and everything else. Soon, Mark Golding will have to resign from the parliament because he was not duly elected with his dual allegiance. Guys, this will be the first time in history in Jamaica that an opposition leader will have to resign because of his dishonesty about his immigration status. He will have to resign and run a by-election just like we've seen before with the JLP MPs who were brought to court. 
Anyway, guys, make sure you're keeping it locked here to Jamaica Politics University, where you get all the political news, reviews, and updates. The best. Make sure you are tuning in to our live broadcast, Monday through Fridays at 7 p.m. Jamaica time. And guys, be sure to subscribe, turn on your notification, so that you get every upload that we do here on this channel. Tell your friends about this channel. Make them come over here, come hang out with us. See you in the next video, guys. Take care. <music>